Now that we're so close to Fontaine, I wanted to do some retrospective videos talking about a few things that came out during the Sumeru arc that I think are really, really cool. Be it a couple of characters that I think are significantly underrated or some teams that I'm absolutely loving. I wanted to have a look at how Genshin has progressed over this last year before, you know, things get dramatically different again. So today, I wanted to have a look at a team that I think was only made possible because of Dendro's release, mainly because, well, it's a Dendro team. Benny We're here Dendro with Masadori and the national team. How about now? I prefer the real international. I said the real international. Perfection. From the land of freedom, the greatest mind to ever graduate from the Sumeru Academia, she who also received a new sexy outfit during the Sumeru arc, the one who, after realizing the studies in the Academia were simply hashtag way too dank, decided to just enjoy life by leaving and becoming a librarian instead, the one who has kept me playing this goddamn gacha game for the past three years, we have Lisa. From the land of contracts, the doctor who isn't the doctor, founder and owner of the Boo Boo Pharmacy, caretaker of Chi Chi, and the last signatory of Cheng Sheng. We have Bak Shi Yi Sung. From the land of eternity, I present Her Excellency, the almighty Narukami Ogosho, God of Thunder, or as I call her, A's friend and familiar, our Queen of Sass, the founder and chief editor of the Yai Publishing House and the head maiden in charge of the Grand Narukami Shrine, Guji Yai Samades. And from the City of Scholars, the Archon herself, Lord Kusanali, the God of Wisdom, she who for 500 and possibly two years was confined in the sanctuary of Suristana, the daughter we rescued from the and it makes me feel really, really good to say this. Former Grand Sage. Seriously, fuck this guy. The only one who has actively helped us understand what's going on with the whole sibling storyline. We have Nahida. Four characters, four nations, four mages. It's the Quadramage International. Let me show you what that looks like. We're here with Masanori and International. Alrighty, let's do this. So, I'm gonna first start off with Baiju. I know, unusual, but I will explain that in a sec. Then we're gonna go into Nahida. And we're going to get a big nuke. Oh, I don't think that crit. That's fine, that's fine. Taking a turn for the better. Huh? Huh? A sight to behold. Emerge right here, right now. Lots of damage coming from Miko. Come a little closer. And of course, I'm on fielded with Lisa because I am a Lisa main. With Gendro's release came the Quicken reaction. And because of that, everyone on the team has a role to play. C6 Lisa is built for her damage. Her A4 passive gives us a defense shred. Her held skill is a nuke and she can apply heavy consistent damage with her normal attacks, her tap skill, and Melanton. She's activated like crazy and apparently I have one of the top 2% Lisas in the world. Eventually it's going to be one of the world's best. Meanwhile, Baiju is our healer with a passive that increases everyone's quickened damage based on his health but you do need to have his shield up. That's why I started with Baiju, so that everyone can at some point get healed by his shield. So then for six seconds, he would be giving ev the character who was just recently healed 28.7% additional aggro or spread damage. So that's very useful. He's also the only character that I reckon I'm actually gonna use Fav decks on because every other catalyst that I've come across so far, I kind of prefer using other weapons on. After all, I am a 
bit of a catalyst made myself. Someday I'm going to level 90 him because he does require Violet Grass. Violet Grass is extremely annoying to farm. But you can put it in a teapot garden, I just don't do gardening. We also have Nahida, whose primary role is off-field damage. As I previously mentioned in a video entitled, I now have one of the strong world's strongest Nahidas, I somehow ended up with one of the world's strongest Nahidas, so that's making this team a lot better. On top of that, my Nahida is C2. So that's going to make a huge difference, but this team totally works without C2 Nahida. You don't need constellations on Nahida to do a team like this. That being said, from what I gather, having multiple sources of defense shred from Nahida and Lisa, it's not a bad thing actually. It's not like C2 Nahida is actively stepping on the toes of Lisa. So that's okay. Nahida obviously will then have the highest EM in this team. So when she uses her ult, the active character is getting 184.5 EM share from Nahida. So keep in mind that this is basically nearly a free EM main stat piece. So that's going to be really, really good. Super helpful not just for herself if I decide to on-field her for a brief moment, but also Lisa when she's on-fielding and doing a lot of aggravate reactions, and Miko when she's on-fielding, because her ultimate doesn't have an ICD, meaning EM bonuses actually useful. And finally, we have Miko, whose role on this team is to do as much consistent and constant damage as possible. In this team, we're not using any real dedicated on-fielders. We're not using like Seno or Ohatham. So I do tend to swap my characters around quite a bit, as you could see in that demonstration. This also means that whenever I feel like Miko's turrets are about to expire, I can just swap back to her, drop her ultimate and summon some more turrets and move on. In a similar case, if I see that her ultimate is ready and she still has those three turrets, we can start nuking again. My Miko is currently sitting at C2 with the eventual goal of one Miko Constellation per rerun, so we'll see when we get another Miko rerun. I will be C6ing, C6ing her someday in the distant future. But again, keep in mind this team is absolutely totally 100% playable without uh, C2 Miko. You can totally play this team with C0 Miko. Just keep in mind though, without any Constellations, you're probably going to want to build a bit more ER on your Miko than I have because C1 is actually kind of game-changing for her. It does really help her a lot with those energy requirements. So just keep that in mind. Now that being said, on top of that, you don't have to necessarily use these characters if you don't want. Let me offer you some alternatives. If you're not a Lisa main, then you can consider Fischl instead. Fischl is really, really good in quick and reactions. If you don't have Baiju for whatever reason, you can run Yao Yao. Personally, I feel like Baiju is a bit more reliable because he can heal off-fielders Ben without having to use an ultimate and he's also never really needing any dedicated on-field time unlike Yaoyo whose ult does kind of want her to be on-field for about 5 seconds I believe it is. Baiju doesn't have any of that. If for some reason you don't have and you don't want Nahida, why would that be? But Okay, fine. I highly recommend Thingnari. Thingnari is a wicked sick quick swap character who works really, really well in a team like this as well. He's also going to be one of the first that I will be doing uh, a video on as part of this whole like retrospective look at the Severo arc shenanigans. I mean, aside from that, you do also have potentially a particularly well built DMC or a particularly well built Collie if you're a Collie main or a DMC main. This is a team that's going to work with them as well. If you like El Haytham a lot, you can also play him on this team instead of Nahida. But just keep in mind, he does tend to require a lot of on-field time. So if you're fine with that, then he's great too. Now, if you can't handle the sass of Miko, you can play A. She will demand some on-field time whenever you use her ult. And Quicken A usually isn't a huge damage increase compared to a C6 Sara with Raiden Inquisition, that kind of shenanigans, mainly because Quicken doesn't really favor already massive attacks like A's ultimate. But that being said, if you happen to actually have C6 Sara, you can totally use C6 Sara in a team like this as well. Sara by herself can actually do some pretty decent damage with her ult, so if you actually build her for damage, and give her a weapon that allows her to do a lot of damage, like 
Oh, I don't know. R4 Skyward Half. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, she can do a lot of damage in a team like this, and also she can buff your other Electro character, like Lisa. Naturally, there is also going to be a question of why the hell would I use a team like this over the old international team? I'm going to give you some reasons to use this team and some reasons to use the old international team. When it comes to using this particular team, it's easy to use. We don't have any hashtag way too dank setups. We also don't have any hashtag way too dank second rotation problems. So that's going to be really good. Just use your abilities when they're ready. Do a lot of damage. Swap, 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 done, go. It's pretty straightforward. On top of that, energy in a team like this doesn't really end up being a problem. Not only because I happen to be running Fav on Baiju, and for me personally, I also happen to have C1 Miko, but Electro Residence, you get energy. So that's really, really good. And also Nahida generates energy while she's off field, which is kind of wild. So that also helps as well. With the exception of Baiju, everyone on this team is doing a lot of damage and everyone in this team is making use of the Quicken reaction. In International, once Tart does his 200k, at least from my Tart ult, he doesn't really do any reactions anymore. It's kind of all about Shang Lang. But in this team, it's all about everyone, so everyone is contributing in some meaningful way. And in a similar case, you don't really have to worry about gauge theory, like, at all. You don't have to worry about, oh no, I need to make sure I have two units of Hydro, otherwise I'm going to burn through it all with my no ICD Pyro. No, it's quick and it doesn't matter. <laughs> you just... You can just bob off with everyone, it doesn't matter. Especially with Nahida, who is constantly providing a lot of Dendro anyway. You'll be fine. It doesn't matter. It, you don't have to think. I think one of the biggest reasons why I will definitely be playing this team over the old international team... No Ben. Which means no boredom. It also means easier healing, because... Let's be real here, you've got Giga Chad Baiju who can heal off-fielders with his skill. Meanwhile, Benson and Hedge is here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Can't even do that with his ult. If you have an off-fielder who's like, I don't know, nearly dead? Believe me, that happens a lot, especially with corrosive damage, for example. When you're using, you know, Benicio Del Toro, you kind of have to put your nearly dead off-fielder on field. And then he's got to die, because that's just how that happens. Oh, and, you know, unlike, you know, Eggs Benedict here, uh, Baiju doesn't have a cap on healing, so <laughs> it's easier to heal your entire team with Baiju. And also Baiju provides a shield. It's a small shield, it's not super duper important, but... On occasion, it does actually give you some, you know, resistance to interruption. So it's nice. It's not something you necessarily want to be relying on. And finally, this team claps Hydro Heralds. But, you know, that, that kind of gets uh, balanced out when I talk about the old international team. Because in the old international team, it can probably handle very fast multi-wave contact a bit better than this one. Mainly because Nahida does take a fair bit of time to reapply her tag to newly spawned enemies. If you find yourself in a situation where you are actually just churning through a whole bunch of enemies very, very quickly, then the old international team can deal with that kind of stuff better because they don't have to worry about tagging new enemies. The Vape Reaction is a multiplier, just a full damage multiplier as opposed to like a flat damage increase based on the reaction. So. That should mean that your damage ceiling with Vapes is higher than with Quicken. One of the big things that does make me a little bit sad when it comes to playing my international team is that because I'm running Miko on this team, it does end up breaking my riding Inquisition, so that's a little bit annoying. Just a little bit annoying. On top of that, this team does prefer having C6 Lisa if you're a Lisa main. Not everyone's going to have C6 Lisa. 
But that being said, though, I think these days a lot of Lisa mates have C6 Lisa because it's been more than three years. More than six rotations, I believe, of Lisa in the shop. So definitely Lisa mains who have been around since day one. You probably already have C6 Lisa. Newer Lisa mains, you're getting there sooner or later. This team also features more five stars. My team, my international team anyway, features more five stars than the old international or even the national teams in particular. Uh, mainly because they feature a lot more of the four stars. What are often called the high level supports. That being said though, with the exception of C6 Lisa or C6 Fischl I guess if you want to play Fischl, you don't need as many constellations because like I said with all the five stars you don't need any of their constellations and this team is fully functional. Whereas with national and international you kind of do want C6 Xing Chu uh, or C, I believe it's C4 Shang Ling uh, to make the team particularly good. One thing that my team can't do is make use of snapshotting. The snapshotting mechanic is not something that is available for quicken reactions, especially when it comes to EM. So I don't really get to use that. As soon as a character is off field, they are going to be actively doing less damage with regards to things like Nahida's Temple of Wisdom. Especially because Nahida's Temple of Wisdom only buffs the active character as well. When it comes to, uh, you know, Benjamin Franklin's buff. Shang Ling can snapshot it and then go off field. I guess Xing Chu can snapshot it and go off field. I don't know how many people do that. Tart, being an on fielder, can also snapshot it, I guess, and then go off field, but he doesn't really do that. The point is, you can use the snapshotting mechanic with the old international team. Can't really do that with this one. And then finally, like I mentioned, the new international team can clap Hydro Heralds. The old international team can clap Cryo Heralds. Because my new international team is Dendro and Electro, they kind of get hard counted by Cryo Heralds. But with Shang Ling and Mr. Benoit Blanc, you can clap Cryo Heralds pretty easily. That being said though, my team being chocolate block full of ranged characters and turrets can actually clap the Ruined Serpent and the Winute pretty damn easily. Especially in the Spiral Abyss where when Newt was around and as well as the Spiral Abyss where the Ruined Serpent was around. Yeah. Miko's turrets and Lisa's lantern actually hit it when it was underground. <laughs> this team also can hit the wolf floor pretty easily. <laughs> this team can also hit the wolf floor pretty easily when it's up in the air. The only enemies that can really pose a threat like I mentioned are really Heralds and Lectors, particularly the Cryo Herald. The Pyro Electro can be a little bit meme sometimes, but you can kind of just brute force it with the Electro damage anyway, you'll be fine. That's pretty much it. The new international team. Let me just think about all of this in the comments below. What do you think about a team like this? What do you think about a team that has popped up since Dendro's release? Let me know in the comments. Which one is your favorite, actually? Let me know. One thing I've noticed with this last Spiral Abyss is that for some reason, Bedley's usage rate plummeted. Usually he was sitting very comfortably around the 75 to like 90 something mark. This time, depending on which server you're looking at, he's either below 50, barely above 50, or like not even breaking 65% usage rate. So he fell off. Plus L, plus ratio. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of that in the comments below as well if you want. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Genshin Impact action. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Shut her right here. Emerge right now. Try not to enjoy it. Share my knowledge. I'm always watching. Right here, right now. Emerge. Oh, you I me. Crumbles before me. <sighs>